live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's session, we're going to be converting a model form uh, over to HTML. Basically, we're, we're going to write the HTML by hand a little bit more. Uh, so we'll have a better ability to customize the form layout and attach JavaScript logic to show and hide fields, mainly just for usability um, and navigabil navigability of the form. So I've got uh, some basic research. I'm going to be doing a lot of learning. This is a live code session. Uh, this is not a tutorial. Uh, if you want more of a tutorial or to see how things are working, check out the recap video for, for this session. Uh, where I'll just go through quickly the, the takeaways from this. But these live code videos are me kind of scratching my head, figuring things out, maybe chatting with people uh, on Twitch during the live stream, things like that. Just having other off topic conversations. So if you're interested in that, uh, stick around. Okay, so before we begin, I'm just gonna have a, enjoy my <laughs> club mate. So we have a registration form on this site, and the form HTML is automatically generated. Here, register. Or click the registration button. Uh, yes, I just have to be logged in in order. And it, you know doesn't look the best, it's just form as P. Um, but just with that one line of code, you know, it's rendering all the form fields for us. So that's been, that's served very well. Um, my understanding though that in order to customize a form, um, well, you can use an enhancement library like crispy forms or perhaps in your form um, definition, there might be a way to enhance and define classes on fields, uh, for example, the widgets here. So that might be an approach I could consider, but um, I think really what we're going to do is just, you know, here's our one-liner registration form as P with the token and you have to put your form tags around it, but other than that, it saves you a lot of coding, but I'm ready at this point to start having more precise control over the layout, uh, experimenting with different form widgets, and in particular, in particular, attaching JavaScript logic to show and hide fields based on the values in other fields. So you can see there's a little bit of this imperative logic down here in the script section of the page, basically where based on somebody's age, so let's see if they're 33, these overnight accommodations will appear uh, for their age group and priced accordingly. This form will have multiple layers of logic. We're going to have not all the attenders are going to be staying overnight. Some of them will be only attending during the day. So they won't see these overnight options. They will see the day selections. And then some attenders might just come for one event. It's called the meeting for memorials. So this form field here in that case, they wouldn't see either of these um, because they we know what day that's uh, occurring, on what day that's occurring, and they don't need overnight accommodations. And there could be other form fields that would be hidden in that case, like their dietary preferences. So in order to facilitate this experimentation and refinement, um, I just want to have a little bit more control over the HTML Which means essentially I have to either take an approach uh, illustrated here with a simple is better than complex blog. Really great resource if you're interested in uh, doing Django development. So many good articles here and tutorials, very clear, well written. Um, and you can see in this example that they're iterating over the fields um, and applying markup to those 
manually. Uh, minimal markup. We, uh, I think I'm going to take the approach though where I'm going to explicitly um, identify the fields and apply um, classes, uh, bootstrap classes for layout, like putting some fields next to one another, some above one another. Um, you know, not necessarily using these, um, at least these li items, table. I'm probably not going to use a tab table structure either. So I will need to know basically how to access label errors and help text for each field and how to style this with bootstrap. So let's go ahead and uh, think about this for just a second. So I guess the form has hidden fields or visible fields. So this is a good one to have inside the form if there's non-field errors. I don't know what kind of errors those would be, but in any case, Seems reasonable. And here we're, it's actually called the registration form. And we have our submit button. So what we need to do now, <laughs> have reminders going off, or else, or else I'm getting messages. It could be messages. Check that. Oh, I think I know what's going Okay, they're just email notifications. I do need to make a quick note here though. Um, okay. Let's dig in. Let's have a little bit more. Club Mata, I keep forgetting the name of it. I have one of these occasionally. They're pretty yummy. Oops. It's not a beer. <laughs> it looks like one. Okay, so each of the, f um, this is a model form, meaning the fields come from a model. The form fields come directly from the model. So. In a way, Django, with its batteries included, just does a lot of the work for you automatically. And so essentially what I need to do here is locate the model and just to prime my memory of what fields we have here and get those into a basic markup form. It's not gonna look pretty. We'll start with the first and last name. So I can close. This widgets might still apply the, the uh, hmm, we'll have to see how that works. I'm just going to close this form set, pi out. And now we'll see this first thing. If I just delete this registration form line and refresh the page, we don't have anything now. So I'll add bootstrap classes and markup later. Let's just get the, um, basic form field here, it would be, well, <laughs> I wonder if I can just say 
registration form, first name. Label tag, or if I have to use this visible fields. There it is. All right, so I'm not sure how the, the visible and invisible fields uh, are defined. Man, we can just check out the markup while we're doing this. Once again, this is learning, so I haven't done this stuff so yeah it's just literally a label it'll need the um, ID first name so then let's see essentially you just do a field uh, if field errors we want to display those uh, it looks like we're displaying them above the field I wonder if I can use with registration form here. With is a pretty generic term, but let's just see how many widths are on this page. 101. There we go, the found it. All right, so with something. exactly how I was expecting it to work. I was hoping it would give me the scope of the form so I could access the properties without having to repeat the form name. I don't really have to call a registration form for one for starters. <laughs> uh, how did we get here? So then, if I go to my model and uh, have this register page, That'll simplify the markup a little bit. So now we can just call it for it. And do more copy pasty type stuff.
see what this does. repeat this for last name and I'll sort of group the fields uh, you know, give them a little bit of white space between it so you can visibly see and probably a comment just so that you don't have to maybe parse so much to, to figure out what field we're looking at Redundant, but I can scroll vertically and kind of scan with my eyes just right here on this first name last name on this same level and maybe I can catch it here but there's more noise around it on this line whereas these comments I can just look for the shade and just really quickly identify what field I'm looking for here if I want to edit that later so and how do we do the uh, multi cursor down want to get the ones below it. <laughs> Let's try that one. That's kind of cool. So I hold Alt key and then put a few more of these. Oh, but my operating system, you don't see this, but operating systems is kind of uh, taking over. It's capturing my Alt. So what shortcuts do we have? Shift Alt down and Shift Alt up. That's like selecting a vertical column. Select. Mode, find and replace, make command shift L, command D, control D. Oh, yeah, there we go. Very good. Thanks. I probably saw that in this other article too. in line I don't have to do anything fancy because they're just spans so they're uh, I just I could you know even I could format this um, form which is line breaks for the time being shortcut I can display a way I can display keyboard shortcuts on the, uh, uh, the live stream age it's a numeric field so it's respecting the age widget and again <laughs> I will change the mark up here make these pretty much nicer email
Now, one thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm thinking about doing at least, I haven't really uh, committed to it yet. Uh, but in order to simplify the form, there's basically three, as I mentioned earlier, only three types of registrants. There's um, people who are attending the memorial meeting only, so they're only going to come for one event, and it's a, a few hours. It, it, this is a week-long event. Then there's people who are attending multiple days of the event, and those people fall in two groups. One uh, group of people who are just coming during the day, and they leave, and they come back the next day, they come and they go. And the other ones who stay overnight, and there's camping and dormitory accommodations and semi-private rooms for those uh, overnight attenders. And since I know there's basically the, those, uh, well, the registration type, they're mutually exclusive. Uh, all of those people would attend memorial meetings, most likely, but not memorial meeting only. They, they wouldn't. In other words, they wouldn't only attend memorial, only one group is only attending memorial meetings. So I could create a three-way radio select, and that'll be the entry point into the um, subsequent logic on the form. But uh, I'll figure that out and see if it's, uh, I think it'll work, and it would be simple enough for the users and intuitive, and I'll, I've already done a little bit of research on like what kind of a widget would be nice to, you know, not just simple radio buttons, but effectively a radio button with a little bit better um, aesthetic so you can like have a check box on it or something like that so it stands out really clearly which option you've chosen and so far we're just doing jQuery for the logic so it's a lot of imperative code if that starts to become too cumbersome then I would look again uh, at sort of a declarative way of mapping, uh, uh, managing the, the client state based on the user selection of these fields. Um, but the reason I went with jQuery in this initial uh, form is because there's data attributes that are actually written, that are actually written to the HTML DOM. Um, I don't want to dynamically generate JavaScript, I want my JavaScript to be static and dynamically control the form fields. And dynamic generation of JavaScript would mean in the Django template, interpolating Django variables into JavaScript. It's just not clean. So I'm trying to avoid that. The JavaScript should be static. In other words, I should be able to just copy this, cut it, take it out of this script tag in the, that's inlined in the template and put it in a JavaScript file and include it. So no dynamic runtime generation of this which means then I would have to get the data attributes somehow I'll show you what I mean here once I get this next field there's two two fields from now so you see what I'm talking about with the accommodations I'm just going to paste both of these so with ADA accessible accommodation my comments are already getting out of sync. Ah, sorry, two more fields. Appearing, of course, this is just working very well. All of that. Overnight accommodations. Ah, the user's a hidden field. Yeah. Well, it's not even hidden, but uh, it doesn't get validated uh, on the client or. Yeah, nothing gets validated on the client, so to speak, because we're not using JavaScript or client-side validation, really. Okay. Okay. 
Pretty sure I spelled that correctly. And then model. All right, so it flashed very briefly, but let's uh, again edit this age field. Okay, no, this age field is not going to work. Is it? There it goes. I should be able to directly input it, input into that field though. Hmm. So this is strange. Ah, there's something weird going on here. With my mouse cursor in my browser. Okay, so it's not necessarily this site. But, uh, you can see when I edit, uh, just change the field that the combination types change. Uh, what I'm trying to illustrate here, I'll figure out this browser thing in a minute, but or some later, but. Uh, I've got these the data here as data attributes, the age minimum and age maximum for this accommodation type, and then the um, fees can be used for ca calculating the um, this the running total in the client. And I was looking at a couple of um, well more progressive enhancement style JavaScript libraries for the client side reactive client side declarative reactive de client side code and they all want to manage the state they need the state to be defined typically in JavaScript and they're not geared to sort of pull the initial state out of attributes HTML attributes which was unfortunate And they sort of have a global state, and uh, you have to define subcomponents and things like that too. I think that's overkill. I'd actually like to just to have this this form be a uh, sort of a reactive context, and the data coming out of the certain data attributes fed direct, directly into that context, as well as the input fields themselves being having two-way. Well, I don't know if two-way data binding is necessary, but some sort of data binding to the context. So that said, if I rely on Django to do my form markup, then I don't have to change my JavaScript currently because I've worked around it, but the fields are behaving really abnormally. Uh, like something maybe the way the browser's rendering them. It's, it seems like I should be able to click the form here, but I have to move it up to over two thirds of the way up. And I'm wondering if I, Use crispy here if it's going to break everything. So it's just not worth fussing with the crispy forms. This is because I def uh, overrode the widget for checkboxes. So yep. And I'm here on the um, the days field.
Oh no, I spent more money on me. Strange. Oh, it's a checkbox, but it's not select multiple. That's what confused me. This days field lets you select multiple, and I thought that was the what I was looking for. Okay. So let's go ahead and commit this. This is a good start. I'm only gonna work for about an hour today. See how far I get. Kind of tired. So. Yep, so let's take a look at bootstrap tags, which Crispy Forms is just basically gonna do those bootstrap um, three tags for us, okay. Uh, no, it should work with bootstrap four semantics as well, but uh, we wouldn't take that out. Take a look at this just directly from the docs. And the cool thing about bootstrap, it's been around a while, it's very popular, very well made, and there's this cool site called Bootsnip that has a bunch of recipes that we can apply, including this the little select widget I was talking about earlier. Uh, we're got like a ch uh, basically a radio button behaving like a checklist, either check uh, mutually exclusive check marks or multiple select check marks that are actually pretty nice and easy to use and probably big enough for people on their phone or tablet. So what we need is just a little bit of markup here. So we have a form and a form group. So let's do that, and we got a label and an input inside of that. All right, looking good. I suppose the field errors can just go right up there. First name, form group, indent, the form group. And then we've got a label. It's going to be automatically generated. Errors which will appear above the field. And I'd also like help text. I just realized, does this tutorial have help text? Yeah, there it is. You have help text. Good stuff. Put that in all the other examples. Dang it. <laughs> right. Oops. I'm gonna kind of keep my commits. So, what did I do here? Oh, I just got too much. There we go. Kind of uh, meaningful, so that, you know, sort of one thing I'm doing in each commit, one consistent thing in each commit. Just render just the same. Then we'll add the bootstrap. Now there's this nice thing with regular uh, HTML templates. Uh, I can't remember the name, but a lot of complete these. If I say div, no, div dot form group. Yeah. 
it's not automatically doing that for me. So I have to just type out the markup, unfortunately. behaving properly uh, and maybe the JavaScript will still work because all I'm adding is a form group around these might be good ah uh, yes so this means I can also just get rid of the BR, excellent. Not bad. Oh, do I still have there? Yeah. Indent. Now that I've got not only these comments, but then the indentation, it makes it real easy for me to scan down and just read the field names. You know, maybe it's just my sort of preference, obviously, but little cues like that help you along the way, especially when you come back to old code. It's looking decent. Now, 20 minutes, I'm gonna call it good. Um, so these are multiple option fields. Let's go ahead and see how to um, loop over these. I believe it'll be, here. I'll look it up if, if, if it's not the case. Sometimes uh, you can get away with this with Django. It's pretty cool. Let's just see. Yeah. Hmm. Excuse me, the template operators, you have to use this percent sign syntax, and these will actually interpolate the value into the template. That's the double curlies. So. You can see why I'm not wanting to do too much more tonight. Hmm. 
So if I have four of these paragraphs, no. All right. And specify choices for the field. It's a foreign key field. Ah. Hmm. So yeah, this all returns a query set. 
This is a foreign key. It actually has to retrieve these values out of the database. So that's what comes back. Increase it comes back from the database. I think they're still using choices for consistency. This is from 2011, though, so this was a while ago. discussion as well. Django has been pretty good about keeping things backwards compatible or like consistent over time. So some of these older answers are, are good, but I don't know, man. Actually would be nice if this would just work so for name and days attending right and if I treat it as an iterator if I'm in it and trying to iterate over it it would then run the iter method oh wow okay that's clean <laughs> so rather than just rendering the form itself I use it in a for loop and it's handled correctly for me good Um, why did this get down? It's the right answer to. This group uh, syntax. I think this would look nice in a, a simple list group like this. Reason bootstrap material design library here called bootstrap material design. Maybe I should just drop this requirement in. I mean, it's kind of nice. group and makes it invisible and really far apart. It's like it's all behaving like Liz group flush. This is a strange thing here. Well, what if I just take and drop this? From the base template, I'll just comment out a couple. Mm.
mean, it looks <laughs> not beautiful. It looks like bootstrap, right? But I'm not sure if I'll, I'll come back to that later, that decision later. I mean, I do kind of like the, the fact that these are all flush and sort of nice. Sort of legible. That's actually probably not very accessibly rendered. Check the font contrast on that. Anyway, I'm getting super tired now. Leave it alone as it is. It's spaced out. And because of that, I will just render it as a regular list. Just tighter though. Ah, except I don't like the. The reason I'm assigning an ID here is I'll be using the JavaScript logic to hide this entire section. And now what we want to do is just iterate over the options uh, again. Um, but I need to preserve the structure. Actually, I don't need to preserve the structure because it's... nested too deeply. So I'll just have to fix my JavaScript. So now the JavaScript won't work. You can see the whole list is rendered there as radio button, radio buttons. So that's good. I'll commit this and I'll try to fix the JavaScript. Maybe I can do that in five minutes. Carefully, the um, markup is simpler now. So I think some of the JavaScript I was just having to traverse the DOM, grabbing an item um, option. So I need the ID or something, and then reaching up into the parent and showing and hiding that. You can see here, parent, parent. So yeah, 
actually we need to check these so first thing I'm doing is looking for this the input inside of this overnight accommodations field so let's take that Mm. Yeah, it still has that nesting, doesn't it? Dang it. Well, in any case, then all I need to really do is give the L. So just change these IDs. So. Container. <laughs> verbose the JavaScript is looking for this this selector I think it's just no it's underscore so you can see the selector is looking for that and grabbing all the inputs inside there to do its thing so if I give it the same ID, then the JavaScript would be back to working because the selector, those, uh, inputs are listed, are nestled inside of here. Later I'll switch it away from being LIs to divs and we'll see that, how, why that is the case, but essentially we're back in business here. as I go through the age groups that the accommodation options change to reflect the pricing for each of those age groups so yeah we're working and it's right at 59 minutes well then cool a little bit of a chill session just working through some HTML improving the form structure here so we now have a little bit more manual control and you know walking away without any breaking changes it took a while to get that javascript to work last time so that's good um, when we continue we'll be working on improving the aesthetics here and rolling a couple fields into one creating a new field basically uh, that has it's a three-way choice and, and it'll control the visibility of these other forms uh, we'll look at boot snip for um, an elegant way to render these radio buttons so they're not so kind of browser native looking in, in these checkboxes as well uh, so they're more colorful and larger and you can really clearly see what is selected and what's not very cool all right well this has been a codebuddies.org live coding session if you're interested in doing some open source development particularly working with the Django framework or react we are in the middle of rewriting codebuddies.org uh, as an open source project on GitHub. We need people of all, all experience levels to help us out. If you want to learn uh, those technologies or if you can help uh, lead the way, yeah, everybody is welcome. We've got easy tasks and more challenging tasks. And also it's a good opportunity to, <laughs> opportunity to define the future of the platform, come up with new ideas, new features. All right, well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.